Welcome to Sleepless Readings. Tonight we'll be reading a tale called Maintenance. There's something weird about this apartment complex. I've lived here for a little over six weeks now. The rent is reasonable. My unit is small, but comfortable enough. The maintenance folks are responsive. They usually come within an hour, which honestly shocked me at first. I put in a request on the website to have the kitchen sink looked at, and within minutes I jumped at the sound of someone knocking on my door. It's a little too good to be true, to be honest. It was still pitch black outside my window when I woke, and my bladder demanded immediate action. Looking at my phone, I saw it was 2.56am. I slid out of bed and stumbled into the bathroom. The toilet was making noise. You know how they just run sometimes. I ignored it and sat down, scrolling through TikTok as I did my deed. When I was finished, I got up and flushed and heard a frankly very alarming hiss. A few seconds later, I watched as water began to trickle down the side of the tank, dripping off the mostly white porcelain and pooling on the floor. It wasn't much water, and it stopped soon after, but I was pretty sure that wasn't supposed to happen. Shit. I frowned at first, and then smirked a little at the pun I'd made, but the frown returned quickly. I opened up the app on my phone to put in another maintenance request. A little notification popped up as I tapped on the wrench icon. A box that read, Please do not submit maintenance requests between the hours of 3 and 5 a.m. Management. My frown deepened and I rubbed one eye with a closed fist, staring at the little box. That didn't make any sense. What difference would it make? They wouldn't read the request until morning anyway. According to my phone, the time was 3.01 a.m., but I just shrugged and clicked the X to close the notification and tapped the wrench icon again. I knew if I didn't just send the request in now, I would forget by tomorrow. After sending the message, I went back to my bedroom and rolled into my spot. It wasn't warm anymore. I laid there in a starfish position for a few moments, staring at the ceiling. From my open bedroom door, I could see the blue lights of my PC on the ceiling. I watched as they changed to green, then to red. I probably should have turned off my computer before bed. I froze. Someone was knocking on my front door. Three loud, slow, deliberate knocks. I didn't move a muscle. Didn't even blink. And of course, in true millennial fashion, there was absolutely no way I was opening that door. It took me a second to realize what the word was. The voice was deep, but garbled, inhuman, and it made every hair on my body stand on end. Goosebumps pricked across my skin. It felt like touching the screen of an old-fashioned tube television with my whole body. Finally, I moved, sliding back off my bed and onto the carpet. I crouched down on the side of my bed, away from my open door, hopefully hidden from view. I heard one last bang on my front door, accompanied by the sound of splintering wood, and I whimpered as a hot tear rolled down my cheek. I'm certain if I hadn't just peed, I would have been doing so now. Then I heard the jingling of keys, followed by the somewhat familiar creak of the door swinging open. Coming in. The slow rhythm suggested footsteps, but the weight of them had me concerned that the second story floor might give in. I saw a shape blot out the PC lights on the ceiling. Hulking and vaguely humanoid, it continued to thud across the floor, making its way toward the hall and to my bedroom door. I closed my eyes tightly. The electrical feeling was stronger now. I was sure even the hair on my head must be rising at this point. It was right there. I knew it was. Right in my bedroom door frame. It wasn't making any sound, but I could still feel its presence. If it hadn't been for that feeling, I might have thought it disappeared. After several consecutive minutes of hiding behind my bed and trying not to cry too loudly, I started to wonder if maybe I was hallucinating. Maybe the glass of wine I had before bed was laced. Hell, maybe I was still asleep and this was a terrible nightmare. I took a deep breath and slowly peeked around the corner of my bed. Nope, still there. It was too dark to pick out many details. It appeared to be a large masculine human. Very large. Way too large. 
Its head was partially obscured by the door frame and hard to identify in front of massive hulking shoulders. It was wearing clothes, mostly. Tattered denim overalls, but not much else. A huge, rusty keychain with mostly broken keys dangled from its side. Its skin was marred with patches of holes? Like pores, but big enough that I could see them even in the dark. It had what looked like acid burns as well, on its exposed arms and bare feet. Huge feet, covered with dried mud, I think. Or I hoped, anyway. It was impossible to tell what color its skin was as the lights continued to shift behind the creature. I couldn't make out any facial features except its eyes, or what I assume were supposed to be eyes. Two big round glowing circles filled with TV static and nothing else. But I could tell it was focused on me. It moved slightly when it caught sight of me, and I heard the jingling of the rusty keys. I stopped breathing. Stopped everything. Maintenance. It continued staring at me. A beat passed. Finally, I shouted at the creature, my voice cracking in fear. Uh, the toilet. Neither of us moved for a moment. I thought I saw something change in the static eyes, like when you rewind a VHS tape. Finally, it turned back toward the hall and continued to the bathroom. I didn't move from my spot, just listened as I heard it stomp into the tiny room and the flush of the toilet. I heard the sounds of running water, and then another, much louder sound I had never heard before. Creaking metal and several incredibly loud cracks. Then the hiss of spraying water. Soon the thuds began again. It was on the move. I watched as it walked past my bedroom door, my entire toilet in its grasp, ignoring me. I cautiously followed and peeked out from my room as it made its way to the now destroyed front door. Thank you. It crashed through the remains of the door and began stomping downstairs, holding my toilet in its massive hands that I now realized were missing several fingers. The cops obviously didn't believe a word I said. I think they thought it was some kind of insurance fraud. The property manager sent me an email offering to move me to a new unit while they fixed everything up free of charge. They also informed me that I would be receiving free rent for the next three months if I chose to stay at their property. At the end of the email was a PS asking me to please respect the rules of the complex in future as they are there for good reason and also informing me that due to my recent disregard of the rules, I would not be receiving my deposit back should I choose to move. I didn't ask any questions. They've moved me into a two-bedroom now. It's nice to have an office. Thank you for listening. That was Maintenance. Don't forget to like the video, it does help to boost the channel. Leave a comment for the algorithm. There's new stories every Sunday. Not to mention the shorts on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So subscribe. And ring the bell. <laughs> Thanks guys. And as always, stay sleepless.